Hey Canucks fans, the Canucks are back to 500 with a 4-1 victory over our nemesis, the Chicago Blackhawks in Chicago. Here's what I liked, here's what I didn't like, and here's one other thing. What I liked, I liked the play of our third line, especially at the start of the game. Jason Dickinson, Matthew Hymer, and Niels Hoglander. They were probably our best line for the first 20 minutes, and I thought they played solid for the entire game. Dickinson actually had the first... The first goal for the Canucks, it was a really nice uh, one-timer actually from the slot. And he opened the scoring up just six and a half minutes into the game off of a, it was a three-way pass, uh, passing play by all three of those guys actually. Highmore, Hoglander, and then of course Dickinson finishing it off. Got the Canucks off to a good start and that was really the only highlight of the first period. I'll get to that in a second. So I like the play of that third line overall. Um, Dickinson third line center as opposed to being a fourth line center because JT Miller went up to the lotto line. I'll get to that in a second as well. So I did like the play of that third line. Dickinson gets 15 minutes of ice time. Highmore gets, where is it here? 13 minutes of ice time. And Hoglander had 13 minutes of ice time. Now Dickinson actually had four minutes of penalty killing time. Him and JT Miller had the most at four minutes apiece. And then Highmore got some penalty, uh, penalty killing time as well, although he was in the box for, for one of those penalties. So yeah, I like that. I, and I think when your top line is struggling to get going, it's really important that you have other lines step up. And I definitely think that that line did, especially in the first period. I also liked uh, Kyle Burrow standing up for Niels Hoglander. Hoglander got uh, checked by Stillman of... Um, Stillman of the um, of the Chicago Blackhawks twice in one shift. The first time Stillman actually cross-checked Hoglander, kind of a dangerous play, and put him in the boards face first. And then on the next entry, he did a hip check to Hoglander, and then Burl stepped in and fought Stillman. It wasn't a, a massive fight, but it was good to see Burl stand up for his teammate. Now, uh, were the hits dirty? Eh, the first one by Stillman I didn't really like. I actually had more issue with the first one than the second one, but uh, no harm, no foul. But I was glad that to see Kyle Burl stand up for, for his teammate. And Burl's has been really good as a third D, uh, third pairing guy. Very solid, uh, not noticeable in a good way. You're not supposed to notice your third pairing defenseman. Uh, but speaking of defensemen, I thought Tyler Myers had a really good game, actually. He had an assist. He made uh, some pretty good defensive plays, including one where he he leaned over, sprawled out, and they actually blocked a pass for the first time, I think, in forever. So I actually thought Myers was good. 21 minutes of ice time, including four and a half minutes killing penalties. I thought, I thought he was good. I really liked the second Canucks goal where it was huge, uh, sustained pressure by the second line of Horvat, Pearson, and Garland. Hughes holding the line. That's the one where he went from the left boards all the way to the middle, wrist shot, and then Pearson tips it in. I really like that because Hughes showed how valuable he was on that one particular play. He's made a couple plays at the line to keep it in and just opens up so much space by simply changing his angle from going from a, a, the corner, or basically the, the boards, where you he can only really go one way, to, right to the middle where he's got the whole ice in front of him, just opens it up. The defense, defense and the forwards don't know where he's going to go, the opposing team that is. And then he just buys a lot of time and space. And Tanner Pearson, I know a lot of people don't see him as a second liner. They want to see him demoted to the third line. But he plays really well with Bo. We saw that when he made that nice centering pass to Horvat over the weekend. And we saw it today. Again, Pearson battling in front of the net, battling with Lankinen, battling with any Blackhawks defenseman that tried to take him down and ends up tipping that puck in uh, for it was ultimately the game-winning goal. So I, I like the play of the second line as well in spurts. And I guess, obviously, I love the play of Thatcher Demko making 29 saves on 30 shots. The only shot to beat him was Debrinkat's really nice shot on, on the power play in the first period. And so I thought Demko had another solid game. Probably, uh, he's been solid actually all year. Hasn't gotten the results, but I was really happy that he he um, had such a strong game and got the win tonight. And then the lotto line. Do I put them in what I liked or what I didn't like? I think they kind of straddle both. Uh, I thought they... Okay, what I did like, even though their goal was on a power play and it was on a five on three, it was uh, Besser from Pedersen Miller, Miller to Pe Petey. Petey, that really nice pass through the slot and then Besser getting two whacks at it. Lankinen saves his first shot, but then Besser puts the rebound in. So I like the determination on that play by Besser. I like the fact that Petey made that really nice, nice pass. 
And even though they struggled in the first period, which I'll get to in a second, I thought that you need a goal like that. Yes, it was five on three. Yes, it was a power play. Yes, it was kind of a bit of a garbage goal, although the pass was really nice and good effort by Besser. Sometimes that's that's all you need to kind of get going to get off, off your schneid, so to speak. So um, maybe that gives the team confidence. They didn't have to do much offense in the third period. Actually, the Canucks scored the only goal in the third period is Connor Garland's empty netter. I loved how Connor Garland actually skated really fast too, even though there's no one close to him. But you can tell he means business coming out of that penalty box. But um, overall, I, I thought the lot of line got better as the game went on, and they didn't have to do much offensively in the third period. So what didn't I like? Basically, I didn't like the Canucks' start to the game, um, especially after what Coach Green has been saying, what Horvath's been saying, what Dickinson's been saying about soft and not hard enough to play against and a better effort. And aside from Dickinson's goal, that was really the only highlight of the first period, and I guess the way Dem- Demko played. They are outshot badly, well, 12-9. to nine. They are outplayed very badly and i admit i was kind of worried i know a lot of people on twitter they're worried too because after all this talk about coming out and and basically redeeming themselves from that embarrassing performance on saturday night the game started off look, looked like it was going to be like that on saturday night tuesday night the buffalo loss it looked like it could have been much of the same against a, a a poor team but as the game went on as the team settled down they played a lot better so that's one thing i didn't like though i did not like the start the only other thing really would be, um, I guess, their, the penalty kill to start the game. But then they end up going three for four, or, or Chicago went one for four, which isn't bad. Chicago was one for four, so Canucks go three for four, 75%. And the Canucks themselves go one for four. So both teams went one for four. That means using the Clay Special team stat, the CSTS, 75 plus 25, 100%. That's average, right? You want to be over 100% in your special teams. So I thought the Canucks special teams was okay. Um, but I didn't like they killed that first penalty. But again, you're missing Sutter. You're missing Mott. Two guys that would generally play on the penalty kill. So I, I don't want to um, rag too much on the special teams because they were uh, satisfactory tonight. They weren't great, but they weren't brutal. Canucks actually won the faceoff battle for the first time, I think, this season. 55% to 45%. And they were outshot again t- uh, tonight. But um, but at least uh, they came out on, on the good end of it. So a, a 4-1 victory. What's one other thing? Well, I guess the one other thing tonight is um, is despite how poorly the Canucks have played, they're in a good spot. And I know I talk about the stat a lot, but I, I want to talk about this one time because I think it's, it's really, really relevant. Is to be a playoff team, you have to go 500 on the road and you have to win two-thirds of your game at home. You guys hear me say this all the time. 500 on the road means you get 41 points in 41 games. Two-thirds of the games at home that you win, that means 20, you know, 24... No, let's go 27 wins out of the 41 games. That's more like two-thirds. That's 54 points. 54 plus 41 means 95 points. That's at least good enough for a wild card spot. You want to finish higher than that. So throughout the six-game road trip, the Canucks basically got to... You want to be 500. Well, with that win, they now have five points in five games. So that is 500. So a win in Seattle on Saturday night, which I think the Canucks can do. Then they come back home, six-game road trip. Not the toughest teams, but still starting six games on the road. If they can come back with seven points in six games, that's over 500. And then you're feeling good about yourself as you start your own seven-game homestand. So my one other thing is, despite all the, you know, all the kind of, worrying and fretting over the past few days Quinn Hughes not playing well uh I mean uh, Quinn Hughes not playing team not playing well what's wrong with the lotto line um I I think when you step back you don't want to get too high with the highs and too low with the lows but when you step back the Canucks are now 500 on the road and that's what they need to be so you guys know that I'm going to do this contest now on my post game videos all you have to do is do what I just did um, but type it out Tell me one thing that you liked about the Canucks performance. Tell me one thing that you didn't like. So it can be a thing, a player, or a play. And then one other thing. So one other thing is usually an observation, a reflection, something that really doesn't fit into what you liked or what you didn't like. It's basically a catch-all. That's what I put into one other thing. So as long as you leave a comment, one comment, don't do one for what I like, don't do another one for what I like, I didn't like, and another one for one other thing. Put all three into one comment, and then I'll cut off contest. I'll basically take entries into the start of the next Canucks game. So as long as you're you have your comment in by Saturday's game against when the Kraken when they start, because I don't want people going back and making stuff up. So it's got to be fresh, right? It's got to be over the next couple of days. At the end of the season, I'll add up all. So by doing so, you get an entry. At the end of the season, I'll add up all the entries, and we'll do a draw. 
uh, for for hundred dollar gift certificate to to a van base. Maybe actually I'll, I'll cut it off halfway through the season. So there's two draws. There's one halfway through, and there's one at the end of the season. Regardless, I want to know in the comments below one thing that you liked, one thing that you didn't like, and one other thing. Shout out to my hero members: Nux fan number twenty nine, Lucas Gates. Just incredible, and Andrew Chang, and to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shannon Hollingworth, and Carol Bovenlander. Thanks for your support, and thanks to the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. As always, this blog brought to you by this vlog brought to you by Perform and Transform Personal Training and Weight Loss. Um, sign up now for a free seven-day trial. Use the video link. Use the link in my video description. And also, if you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or in my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you like to, like this video if you like to, become a member of the channel if you like to, and leave a comment down below if you'd like to. What's one thing you liked? What's one thing you didn't like? And tell me one other thing. Canucks cracking Saturday night in Seattle. Should be should be a great game, home opener for Seattle. So they start on the road as well. And then this is the final game of our six game road trip. And then we're finally home for our home opener on Tuesday night against Minnesota. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great night. God bless and go Canucks go.